This is a quick introduction uh, to the dialogue editor. Uh, dialogues can be very useful and make your program a lot more user friendly than some of the basic functions in approach. Uh, thing, things like pop up screens can be uh, designed to suit whatever needs you like. Uh, message boxes that you found difficult uh, in other systems uh, with approach um, can be really enhanced using this feature as well as um, using these sort of screens that you're seeing now. Uh, the issue with message boxes of course is that a lot of the functionality that w is built into approach disappears. Uh, you must write scripts behind every action that you do on a message uh, box. You cannot use macros, although you can put a macro into a script to assist you, um, which is different to this function. going to do now is go to the uh, dialog uh, editor and show you message boxes. In this program I've got a lot of message boxes created. Uh, to enhance what we're doing now I'll create a new one and it's simply a matter of create dialog and you get this default uh, dialog uh, with two standard buttons, an OK and a cancel button. You can put as many buttons as you like. Uh, these are two default buttons and they have certain actions that are attached to them if you wish to use them although you can put any function you like. Clicking on any dialog box uh, automatically opens the script editor. Uh, as I said, you need to attach a script to every action that you do. Uh, the properties, uh, right-clicking on any button or any uh, on the dialog, brings up their property boxes. As you can see, you have a name and a caption. In this case, I'll change the caption of this dialog box to this is a demo. And uh, literally, you can see that you have uh, actions that are built into the functions. Uh, control box, uh, which is the X on any window that you see that appears on the right hand of the screen to close it uh, by default. As you can see here, the demo box by default appears in the top left hand corner, uh, and the X allowed me to close it. Uh, basically, you could change that sort of property uh, using this and uh, position, get rid of the control box, uh, and get rid of the um, uh, the actual. Uh, or sorry, center the dialog box more to the center of the screen uh, and by hitting F5 key at any time within the dialog editor you actually um, uh, can run this dialog box. And in this case I've made a significant error in running this dialog box uh, because I've got rid of the control box, the X, and I haven't attached a script to close it, I can't physically close this box. So in reality I now have to exit out of Client Master by Control Alt Delete and come back into the program and start again. So I've done that, I've come back in, um, I've repositioned, recreated the dialog box and I'm going to put a script attaching to the cancel button uh, which actually closes the dialog box when I run it uh, just to make sure. Now I'm going to change the name of the dialog box to demo uh, because you must reference the name on any button or action uh, to ensure that it runs that particular window. Uh, so I'm going to say demo.close, simple as that, the script. So if I run this dialog box now, hit cancel, it actually will close. Okay, now in, in regards to um, this function, you can do, a new, as I said, multiple things with a, a box. You can make it a message box, have yes no buttons, retry, uh, but every one of them must have a script attached. I'm just going to readjust the screens here a bit so we can see things a little bit easier. Uh, from a previous demo, I created the demo input box and I uh, put a button and I put a, a field on there. Well, I'm going to get rid of the script that we created earlier to attach that, and now I'm going to put demo.show. Now, when we're in browse mode and we click the button, guess what? We get to show our dialog box. And as we said before, we can, with the current mode that we've got the dialog box set to, or we can actually run other functions on the screen and that doesn't disappear. However, if we turn around and uh, look at our dialog box uh, and actually change this to a modal dialog box, um, we can stop that from happening. So that's simply a matter of, at this point, is by adding the number one after the word demo.show, and that will change the box to my uh, dialog. Now you can get all of these um, scripts and actions in the loader script whilst in the dialog box editor, 
and you can bring them up. See, now I can't operate any other function whilst that box is in the uh, show mode. And we'll go back to our dialog box now, and what we'll do is attach a script and some other functions to this to show uh, the value of a dialog box. And in this case, I'm going to put a uh, change the OK button to save. I'm thinking about it. I'll obviously get there in a second. There we go. Uh, and I rename the button to a save button. I'm going to put a, um, a text field on the dialog box. And I'm going to put a label on that text field to tell me what that text field is about. So a little bit different to approach uh, where your text fields would be attached to a database. In this case they are attached to nothing at all. They are totally variable. So I'm going to say uh, we had a message box and input box once before, insert an email. Well now we're going to do it in this mode here. Um, and we're going to get rid of the word text. So in reality uh, when this dot box comes up it will be empty. Uh, but to ensure that it always is, it's always good to empty the box. Now, because I'm running a script on the actual source of the form when it pops up, I can reference the uh, form by just saying source.text1, which is the name of the text field, equals nothing. Okay. Uh, if I was running a script to reference that field, um, like I am now on the command1 button, I actually must reference the entire name of the uh, text field as it's no longer attached to the source because it's not attached to the source in this case is the button. Uh, so here we are, the name of the uh, dialog box is demo and the field is text one dot text. So my variable that I just created, my text, when I click the save button will be filled with the information that's in that field. Okay, now what I'm going to do is once I click that, take that information, I'm going to close this dialog box and fill the uh, field on the screen, uh, company name field, that I've been filling in previous demos to show you uh, how this works. And all I have to do is reference that company name field because I'll now be looking at that view uh, and its text property will equal my text. Let's see how we go with this particular feature. Alright, so we go into browse mode and we click demo input box. Here it is, we'll insert an email. Uh, not a very good demonstration because I simply overwrote exactly what was there. So what I'll do is I'll actually write a different email and, and uh, change it to something that will Show and as you can see, it changed it to that email with little effort. Again, you could uh, the, the whole function is very good and can be very user friendly. So uh, I use dialog boxes a lot. Uh, I found it adds a lot of power to the particular program you're operating.